My name is Ken Armstrong. I'm the president and CEO of North Arrow Minerals. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this presentation. It's intended to provide some background on the type classification of diamonds in general and also to provide a little more information on what actually causes the yellow color in, in diamonds. And of course, this is important to North Arrow as we have identified a population of yellow diamonds in our Q1 to 4 kimberlite. As is typical of any presentation like this one, um, I will be making some forward-looking statements, so it's important that you, you keep that in mind as you listen along. I'll start with just a little bit of background on the Kilalugak project and the Q1-4 to Kimberlite. We have lots of additional information on our website um, to provide a bit more detail. In general, uh, the Q1-4 to Kimberlite is one of a number of Kimberlites that were discovered by BHP in the early 2000s. Stornoway Diamond Corporation subsequently earned an interest in the project, and North Arrow is right now working to earn an 80% interest in the project from Stornoway, and we'll, we'll earn this interest by collecting a bulk sample from the Q1 to 4 Kimberlite, getting the sample processed, and then getting the resultant diamond parcel valued. And we're very close to the end of that process right now. Um, we should have the final results of the bulk sample reported by the end of April 2015, and the valuation of the diamond parcel is going to happen shortly thereafter. And once that is complete, North Arrow will have earned an 80% interest in the project, and that interest will be subject to a one-time back-in right that Stornoway has, and, and they can increase their interest from 20% to 40% by paying us back three times what we spend to collect and process and, and value uh, that sample. Just in general, Q14 is a relatively big kimberlite for certainly with respect to the Canadian Arctic at over 12 hectares. It's very well located, um, close to the community of Repulse Bay and Tidewater, just nine kilometers away from the community, in fact. Uh, we have an inferred level resource that essentially is about 26 million carats down to a depth of 205 meters. And so the body is it's big. Um, there's plenty of room to expand it. It's of a good grade. There's a good number of diamonds there. But of course, with diamonds, that, that third piece of the puzzle that you need to have is, is the valuation of the diamonds. And that's why it made sense as a next program to go up and just collect a big enough sample to get a large enough diamond parcel in order to get a valuation. Going into this process, we had identified, and Stornoway had identified, the fact that there, there are some yellow diamonds within the Q1 to 4 kimberlite, and we felt that these could be important, and if we could confirm their presence, um, that they could have a positive impact on the valuation. And in fact, at the end of February, on February 26, we announced some initial results from the bulk sample. Um, we reported the recovery of, of just under 190 carats of diamonds from about 609 tons of the kimberlite. And the important takeaway from that release was really the fact that, yes, the yellow diamonds are part of the population. Um, they made up about 8.5% of the diamonds recovered by stone count. And in fact, when looked at by carat weight, they made up even a larger proportion, um, over 21% of the diamond population were yellow diamonds by carat weight. Um, the three largest stones were all uh, yellow in character, some from very interesting yellow colors and, and some a little less so perhaps. But what, the important takeaway for us is, is it underscored the fact that the yellow diamonds are going to be really important when it comes to the valuation process. And heading into that, uh, into that valuation, we decided it would be good to learn a little bit more about the diamonds and have a little bit more information on them. And to that end, we conducted a study of the nitrogen aggregation characteristics. 40 out of 41 of the Q1 to 4 yellow diamonds that we analyzed contained unaggregated nitrogen that's typical of type 1B diamonds. Um, now, the obvious question that comes to mind after reading a sentence like that is, well, what does that mean, and, and why is it important, and why is it important enough that North Arrow would put it in, into a news release? Um, to answer that question, I think we'll just take a step back and talk a little bit first about the type classification of diamonds. The vast majority of diamonds in the world contain nitrogen impurities. Uh, about 98% of all the diamonds in the world um, contain nitrogen, and those are called type 1 diamonds. The remaining 2% of diamonds that do not contain any nitrogen are called type 2 diamonds. The type 1 diamonds are then further subdivided into type 1A diamonds and type 1B diamonds. And again, the type 1A diamonds are by far the most common. Almost all type 1 diamonds are type 1A diamonds, and they are classified based on the fact that the nitrogen impurity in those diamonds have been aggregated into groups of two or more nitrogen atoms. 
the, the remaining very, very small number of type 1 diamonds that are classified as type 1b, they contain nitrogen, but the, un, the nitrogen is unaggregated. It consists of single nitrogen atoms that are randomly distributed throughout the diamond. And these are really rare diamonds. Only about 0.1% of all natural diamonds fall into this category. And as we, we reported in our news release, and it was really important to us, is the fact that 40 out of the 41 diamonds that we tested from Q1 to 4 contain unaggregated nitrogen. And this is really important how rare these diamonds are, and also when looking at the yellow coloration in, in diamonds. Diamonds are yellow because of the nitrogen that's in them, but of course not all nitrogen-bearing diamonds are yellow, and so well, why is that? If we take a closer look at the breakdown of type 1 diamonds, as we mentioned, 98% of all natural diamonds are type 1 diamonds, but in almost all of those cases, the nitrogen is aggregated into either pairs of atoms, in which case they're classified as type 1 AA diamonds, or in the nitrogen is aggregated into groups of four atoms that surround a vacancy where a carbon atom would usually sit, and those are classified as type 1AB diamonds. In both of these cases, um, they do not result in a yellow color in diamond. No light is absorbed um, by these aggregation states. There are two important nitrogen aggregation states that result in the absorption of blue and violet light, which will then result in a diamond being yellow in color. And the most common state are what we call, or what are called in the business, I guess, as N3 centers. And in these cases, these are nitrogen atoms that have been aggregated into groups of three that surround a vacancy where a carbon atom would normally sit. These N3 centers are responsible for the vast majority of yellow colors that we see in diamonds, and also the vast majority of fancy yellow diamonds. But the other uh, nitrogen state that results in the absorption of blue and violet light and results in a uh, yellow diamond are the unaggregated nitrogen atoms that we see in type 1b diamonds. And, and the really important difference between the unaggregated individual nitrogen atoms that we see in type 1b diamonds versus the N3 centers that we see in type 1a atoms is that the, the type 1b isolated nitrogen atoms are really efficient at absorbing blue and violet light and it doesn't take very many of them to get more intense yellow colors. And as we talked about, almost all of the Q1 to 4 diamonds that we evaluated uh, have these isolated nitrogen atoms. When we look at the fact that type 1b diamonds are rare in general, they're also really rare when looking at fancy yellow diamonds uh, as, as a population on their own. This is a really cool diagram that comes from a paper that was published by the, the Gemological Institute of America uh, in which they they reported on the characterization and grading of natural colored yellow diamonds. Um, there's a link to this paper that can be found on our website, and you could also find it from the GIA website as well. Um, on this, you're looking at, on the x-axis, it looks at the lighter to darker tones of yellow colors, and then on the y-axis, so going from left to right, um, you're looking at weaker saturation of color on the left-hand side, ranging to stronger saturation on the right-hand side. Takeaways from the diagram, you can look at in the upper left corner is where the typical D to Z scale of, of diamonds, that's where most diamonds that you'd see in a jewelry store would sit in the upper left-hand corner of this diagram because most of those are clear and colorless and, and they have no, no coloration in them. Once they get outside of that box, they're considered to be fancy yellow diamonds. And the really interesting thing from the study that was done by the GIA is they looked at over 24,000 natural fancy yellow diamonds. And less than 1% of those diamonds classified as type 1B diamonds. And you can see where they plot on this diagram is that purple fuzzy area of the GIA's group 4, which correlated to type 1B diamonds where there's this unaggregated nitrogen or these single nitrogen atoms scattered throughout the diamond. These type 1B diamonds result in some of the most coveted colors uh, for fancy yellow diamonds. Fancy deep colors, fancy intense colors, and fancy vivid colors. Now I think a key thing to keep in mind is this study would have been done on cut and polished diamonds and when it comes to classifying fancy colored diamonds that classification and certification is done on polished diamonds. But I think for us and for the result that we reported and the fact that um, such a large proportion of the diamonds from Q1 to 4 have uh, the characteristics of type 1B diamonds, the real takeaway is that when they're cut and polished 
Type 1B diamonds result in some of the most coveted fancy yellow colors in the world. And that's really what uh, we'd like for, for folks to take away. And we think this is really important information for us to have as we go into this diamond valuation process that we're going to be uh, entering in the next few months. So hopefully that's a bit helpful for you to just hear on, on the characterization of diamonds in general as well as a little bit of a discussion on, on what causes the yellow color in diamonds. We're on track to finish the final processing of the Q1-4 to bulk sample in April. We'll be following that very shortly thereafter with our valuation exercise and we really look forward to uh, reporting the results of that. And if it's positive, then we'll be proceeding pretty quickly with a uh, preliminary economic assessment and ideally be able to, to put some economics to what uh, a potential development of the Q1-4 to Kimberlite might look like. So look forward to keeping you informed as we move forward with this and thanks very much for taking the time to listen today. Thank you.